Okay guys, we're back again this week. As I'm sure you've noticed, we have someone new in the card today. Um, Hello. And you want to introduce yourself? My name is Lauren. Yes. And I am Michael's buddy and <laughs> a film major. And I am bold, I'm involved with KSGS. Do you want to... Uh, uh, I don't think our audience, unless they're most people. Most yeah. people who know about KSGS, who watch my channel, are in KSGS. So oh, yeah. that's, that's <laughs> probably not worth uh, going over too much in detail. So... Uh, <laughs> So we just got out of Evil Dead, uh, the new remake of the classic Sam Raimi horror film, and uh, Jesus. <laughs> bloody. <laughs> oh, bloody. Okay, uh, what did you think? Um, it was interesting. Um, it, it had a lot of homages, obviously, to the first movie. Mm -hmm. um, just, just a few. There just was a few. quite a few references that I caught yeah, especially because I'm a the, nerd. Um, uh, forest rape scene, which I always oh, think yes. is too much. Yes, the, so. ra the rapist tree is back. Yeah, it's really <laughs> which, disgusting. Which I'm again. sure births some kind of weird fetish out there somewhere. For disgusting people. <laughs> <laughs> I try not to judge. <laughs> anyway, yeah, um, I kind of enjoyed this movie. It's kind of weird. It's so disgusting that it's kind of interesting. It, like Some parts of it are really clever, actually. At least the setup is clever. <laughs> I thought I thought the cinematography and the makeup uh, were yeah. Like very to give me credit, aside from like the rapist tree scene, a lot of it is practical effects. Yeah. Do give it yeah. credit, so it's pretty good in that regard. Yeah. That being said, you still have things like the tree, which which is weird and and. Evil Dead 1, it's weird now. Still, yeah, uh, it doesn't need to be in there, firstly, in either. I mean, at least this one, I mean, it's still disgusting, but at least it actually does something, rather than the original movie where it just kind of appears and goes away and no one ever talks about it again. It's still disgusting. I'd prefer not to have it in the movie, but... It's, it's so, so sexist. <laughs> I mean, oh, How's that? Uh, I think it is. If it was a guy, he'd probably do the same thing. Yeah, <laughs> but, still, but... <laughs> in, in either situation... I don't think a rapist just... tree discriminates. <laughs> 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 Probably doesn't dis discriminate. So yeah, screw it. Uh, evil uh. spirit. Let's Not what I meant. Yeah. Uh, but it's like, yeah, like it's. I thought this movie was okay. I mean, like it, it, it felt longer than it was. I think that. Yeah, it was only ninety. Like minutes. it's, it's only an hour and thirty-seven minutes long. I looked it up on Rotten Tomato. Okay. Uh, so it's like, and it felt kind of longer than that. So it's like a lot of the. I don't want to say charm, but the interest from the beginning part of the movie kind of starts to fade away as, like, towards the third act. Except I did kind of like the third act a lot, surprisingly, <laughs> but we'll get into that. <laughs> okay, so, uh, what's the story? Uh, to give us a week credit, the setup is actually really clever as far as a horror movie goes. Um... Well, because, like, it, it set us a believable way of reason they would stay in the cabin. Well, yeah, there was a lot of symbolism also throughout well, the film. There is a lot of symbolism battle. as well. I'm talking more specifically, like, the reason they were there to begin with. It's not like they're on a vacation until they choose to go in a secluded cabin in the middle of nowhere. It's completely yeah, destroyed. Yeah, not, not like fun the first at all. Movie. Yeah, so, like, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, the setup no. they put for this one actually does make sense to a point. Well, I think they should have taken her to a rehab center. Even well, yeah, it there was like that option. It didn't work the first time. So yeah. I don't think the logic of taking her to some god-awful creepy <laughs> location would help also well what her like uh mission. to give context the setup of the movie is basically that um uh, this guy's brother and a bunch and a few other people and a girlfriend has like three lines come down <laughs> yes. to a ca come down to a cabin in the woods and uh basically to get the guy's sister off of drugs basically cut her off cold turkey and basically stay there until she's clean yeah. uh that's pretty much the and that's actually a pretty clever setup because that would like uh that explains why the character brushed off some of her bizarre behavior and like why she would be screaming why she would be like Start acting weirdly until er the whole thing just blows up in their face. Yeah, but it's yeah. like that's like that like that's actually pretty clever. That like, actually kind of makes it work in that sense. Unfortunately, towards the halfway point, it kind of drops this for fairly obvious reasons. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of all of the all the murder all the violence and, the, and, the blood. <laughs> and, and oh, good God, is there a lot of it? Uh, <laughs> I wonder how many gallons they. Oh, used to I think blood. at least like. Uh, 500 <laughs> <laughs> seemed like it especially Pretty towards much. the very end and again we'll get to that point but uh, while they were there going cold turkey they find out uh, they find the Necronomicon they don't actually call it that in this movie but you know er everyone who's watched the Evil Dead franchise knows it's Necronomicon you say it so fast <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're an expert at that I'm a nerd <laughs> I've watched Army of Darkness quite a few times <laughs> But, uh, yes, yeah, so some, some find it, and some, this dumbass history teacher decides, you know what, even though it's covered in barbed wire, and props for that, by the way, I thought that was actually a very nice touch, where it's like, 
like, basically the whole thing's like, do not read this book. It yes. is evil. Yeah. It's covered in leather. It has barbed wire wrapped around it. Tape. They're, like, <laughs> tape and everything. And I, that leads me to another point. I'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> Concerning tape. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But, uh... uh so it's like Barbara, he hit this guy, goes into trouble, apparently not heeding any of these warnings, cuts up on the Barbara, opens up the book, and looks inside and just says, do not read this. Do not even yeah. look at it. Just, just throw it away. Do not touch this thing. And he still reads it, like an idiot. Well, <laughs> like, I had all those um, s similar reactions to things throughout the whole film. Like, yeah, like... I was, all this stupid <laughs> compassion for some, yeah. someone that's going to kill you. Like, there were, it, did, it, quite, it did commit the horror sin, that, the horror cliche that I'm never a yeah. big fan of, which yeah. is, after a certain point, you're too dumb to not. You're just too stupid to live. You needed a little mix of taken in there to just like kill. <laughs> Shaken. <in laughs> that I'm just gonna kill you. So yeah, naturally the way. <laughs> so naturally the dumbass uh, reads, reads the book. Uh, the spirit possesses the uh, sister. I think it was named Mia. I think I think it was Mia. Yeah, I like, can check right now. It's it's not that important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's call her. We'll call her evil chick. Uh, yes. So she called. Uh, so some uh, possesses the. Sister chick by via the rapist tree. I don't feel good about that. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely disgusting. Yeah, but and uh, I think you and I kind of looked at each other like. This <laughs> <laughs> is wrong. Yeah, I, I, I don't get the point. Who, whoever thought that up? Has, Sam Raimi. So, <laughs> yeah. He wrote the original script, so yeah. clearly the rapist tree was his idea. We're talking more about the rapist tree than we are about the actual movie. Yes. <laughs> That, that part, I don't like. <laughs> it's, it's it pisses like... me off. In, in some way. If it was even a male, it would still piss me off. It's just wrong. <laughs> On so many if levels. it was a male, I guarantee every guy in the eyes would go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> I agree. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so and then of course everything hits the fan. Everyone starts dying one by one. You know yeah. the you know the horror drill. You've seen everyone's been seeing at least one horror movie. You know how it goes. Yeah. Which <laughs> pretty much falls into the letter. I will give these guys credit. Like they were a little proactive in how they did things. Well, at least, I mean, some still acted like complete morons. But at least after the girl came out of the basement the second time, they chained down the freaking basement. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they did that in the first movie. Yeah, they did. I, I, I think it, the was chain it? was already there in yeah. the first movie. So yeah. it's like. Uh, we're just gonna finish this job that someone started here. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> at this point, it's like, no, we're gonna just no, <laughs> and just yeah. locks it, locks it down. Looks like he had experience doing that. Which was yeah, and crazy. here's the thing that kind yeah. of bugged me a little bit. I think it, yeah, I feel it bugged you too because you kind of went a mini rant while I was sitting in the movie theater. Yeah, is the fact that these people can take a lot of abuse. I know, <laughs> and somehow just walk so around much. like, meh, no big deal. I can take a few more. Bring it, Especially come on. Especially the uh, history teacher character. <laughs> the history teacher just would not die. <laughs> Like, uh, this is other, this is a uh, black girl in the movie that doesn't, that's the first one to die. I thought for sure it was going to be the blonde chick, but, uh, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. she's the one that dies first. She does it by a pretty gruesome way. She cuts up, like, half her face, and then she kind of goes she after the history yeah. teacher. And the history teacher gets stabbed with a syringe in the face about, about five or six times. And then the chest. And then she gets stabbed in the now. chest with a piece of glass. Yeah. And then he's just, <laughs> that's not even the worst he goes through. Then he gets shot by several nails at some one point in the movie. By the blonde chick. By the blonde chick who cuts crazy. off her own arm. <laughs> And then gets her arm shot off. Yeah, like I, I got yeah. the I got the card off the arm as a reference to Evil Dead Two. I called yeah. it. Yeah, like yeah. that was like okay, that's a nice little touch. It's more, <laughs> much more gruesome than Evil Dead Two, but it's a nice touch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, where was I going with this? Oh yeah, then he gets shot in the nails, uh, in hands, face, chest, everywhere. Just, just and then he gets the girl with the uh, the blonde girl grabs a crowbar and then like basically breaks his freaking hand off. Yes, <laughs> and then and yet. What else happened? He hit. She get. He gets hit twice in the head, and, and he, <laughs> she whacks him also in the chest area too. Oh my which god! Is and then he like. He, there's one point like the black chick that uh, throws him against the toilet like in the spine of his back. Yeah, it looked like. And he then roll over. It's like, dude, how are you not dead? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and yet he still kind of walks off like whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and then to like save the uh, brother guy again and have like in the third act, right before everything just been completely nuts. But even beforehand, he got stabbed like, I thought he got stabbed in the heart and he was going to die right there. Yeah, that's what, he, that's what I thought too, and but then, then it's like, no, it's okay, we got duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> like, five strips of duct tape on his on chest. On his chest, and like, you're fine, you're walking off, all right, this is enough, <laughs> I'm like. This is blood spurring out of his chest. And he's like, you're good, you're good, and you're, I heard you're going to make rant next to me, like, 
you know, he's, he's, that's the army is still probably cut. You know, you can go in there and <laughs> I, thought the was, I thought he got stabbed in the heart. I thought he was yeah, I thought so, too. It looked like it. It yeah. looked like it was in the right spot. <laughs> <laughs> but that wasn't the only time they did that, too. When the other, the blonde girl uh, chops off her arm, too. They wrap it up in duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> As if, like, you're okay now. Just walk it off. I'm like, these feel the most astounding willpower I have ever seen in any horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And cauterization, too. And cauterization. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's nothing short of astounding that them <laughs> died way earlier. <laughs> There's also a, I mentioned her a few times, like a blonde chick in the movie who's supposed to be like the brother's boy, the girlfriend, but she has, I think, three lines through the whole movie. In fact, until she said something right before she got possessed, her arm got possessed, I forgot she was there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she really didn't uh, serve a purpose until the end. She just served a Yeah, even then, the, even then, she's just another monster. That was pretty much what her purpose there was to yeah. be. <laughs> it's like, I was like, oh, you're still here. Okay, I guess it's your yeah. time to die. Uh, well, well, she didn't really serve much of a plot. Um, no, like, she's, like, a, they tr God bless them, they tried to establish a relationship between the two very briefly, but mostly it was just them calling each other baby. That was about the yeah. most development they got in their relationship. Yeah, <laughs> really. yeah. Uh, yeah. She didn't get much airplay, sadly. It's like, uh, we, were, yeah. we were talking about this a little bit earlier, it's like, uh, but surprisingly in this movie, it did not use a lot of CGI, much, really. I think, aside from the tree thing, like, maybe some blood that squirted out of the other girl's arm. Like there, yeah. there wasn't much special effects. Well, you can see, you can see in some uh, like landscapes that it was most well, likely doctored. Yeah, probably a little yeah. bit of green screen in there. Yeah. But it's like even then, like some like uh, it does pay a good homage to the original Evil Dead. Although, even though I'm not a huge fan of the first Evil Dead, I think the sequel is much like ten times better. Uh, it's like I don't yeah. think it's as good. <laughs> oh, from like a story point of view. Well, it's just yeah. a story point. Like it does. The thing about this movie in the original. E Evil Dead is Evil Dead has a certain campiness value. Oh yeah, like yeah. Uh, that, that, that makes it fun, yeah. and this one it takes itself a, little, a lot more seriously. And granted, there are still some very cheesy parts. And I was laughing. At yeah, we them. Were, uh, both of us <laughs> laughed quite a bit at it. Yeah. Uh, you laughed more than I did. I was yeah. a little surprised. I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. When I watch horror films, I get. I can't take it serious. <laughs> or you just, you just get depressed. <laughs> or you're like, oh. <laughs> yeah, there's some, like kind of like that. Ew. Yeah, so much. Gets, oh, yeah, God. <laughs> a lot of dismemberment, a lot of and painful injuries too. Just yeah, like getting like, cut. They, it is, they really emphasize pain. In this it movie. is very. It, there are very unique ways to kill people. I will give them that much. <laughs> <laughs> By yeah. slow and painful and horrible dismemberment. Yeah. Like when the girl gets possessed, like starts burning her skin in the shower. <laughs> like another girl cuts her face up with a piece of glass. Yeah, it's, it's horrible. And then the guy, oh, thing. I forgot about this. The history guy t uh, trips on a piece of her skin and then hits the toilet. Oh, that was, uh, yeah. That, in the, the first in order, the bathroom scene. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's like, that's pretty messed up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the only bathroom scene that I thought was as messed up as that was um, uh, from uh, that Stephen King movie with uh, the the uh, Dreamcatcher. Oh, I don't and think I ever saw that you one. You never saw that. No. Oh, we have to see that. Scene. <laughs> it's horrible what happens to uh, that character in that bathroom. <laughs> that's the only thing that I think. Okay, well that's that. that's good to know. <laughs> but, uh, well, questionable about it now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's like, and then the history teacher has the nerve after basically causing all this crap to basically keep saying it's like do we look okay <laughs> does everything seem okay you're not helping yeah and then, Although, that being said he was the only one that had any sort of logic in the movie yeah he, he was the only one that was like anti this yeah. crazy possessed and there are some parts person. where it's like uh there's some parts like pure, like the cw guy uh said stuff that was so oh. stupid he looks like he can be on he should be on cw oh, the, oh, okay. like the brother guy he looks yeah. like he should be on cw <laughs> <laughs> that's all i could think of as soon as he's like oh so aren't you late for like supernatural or something <laughs> <laughs> or smallville or arrow whatever the hell's playing on that station now <laughs> i think he, i think he wasn't um he's gonna be in the host of the stephanie new stephanie meyer <sighs> franchise Okay. Yeah, I, I think I think he's one of the characters. Yeah, we skipped that one yeah. for good reason. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot support Stephanie Meyer. It's, it's no. <laughs> I'm not doing it. That being mm. said, if it does actually take off, I might have no other choice. But uh anyway. <laughs> Like, there's some part, like, I kind of, uh, that was the point, and I was like, what? Was the part where, like, two-thirds away from the movie, once, uh, basically, of course, all the shit is at the fan. Uh, yeah. They sort of realize they have, basically have to burn the whole place down. He says, you need to kill her. It's the only way to save her. And then he goes, no. 
Like, maybe she's not possessed. Maybe she's just crazy. Maybe she just needs talking to you. It's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Have you not been paying attention for the last, third like, hour? <laughs> no observational skills whatsoever. No, clearly. I mean, I get, I get the whole denial and stress thing. I was like, there's a point where you're like, yeah. Even, like, even the character, the history character started laughing. Because it's like, do you realize just how stupid what you just said sounds? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, was, yeah, that was a really bad, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, a... like, conflict right there, and mm -hmm. the... It just, that was the, the stupid. Girl, the girlfriend <laughs> did the same thing, too, when she did was she do that? beckoning her into Oh, the yeah, I forgot about that, that scene. That was just... And that led up to a really another messed up moment. Yeah, yeah, that was another, like, uh, so something starting to become eh. uh, the rape tree. <laughs> yeah, after that yeah. point, you really, the re there's nothing that tops that, really, in terms of gross factor. So after that, like, everything else just kind of just comes sensitized to everything else that's in the movie. <laughs> yeah. Because after that, it started, it started not to matter anymore. Because <laughs> you just kind of got used to it. <laughs> You're just so creeped out by that. that yeah. made, it's just more grossed out than creeped out. I mean, this yeah. movie's at its core is not very scary. <laughs> no, it's just like a lot of it's just like ew. gore. Yeah. Okay, yeah. It's, like what happens in the scene yeah. we're talking about, uh, I'm sure you, it's in the red band trailers, but it's still yeah. disgusting. Yeah. Uh, it's like what happens is they have, the girl is trapped in the basement now and uh, the blonde chick is walking by and the basement opens up and she's crying down there and like an idiot decides to go down there and try to comfort her. Yeah. And then of course you know what's going to happen. The basement door closes and then she start, and basically traps her in there. And then she starts licking up her thigh, and then it's like, where it's more is this weird going? weird sexual fetish Ugh. stuff. It's really disgusting, <laughs> I, I think. And then she grabs a box cutter, splits I, I her knew. tongue with it, yeah. and then proceeds to, mm, then proceeds to make out with her. I, I don't get that. <laughs> stuff that you can't get out of your brain when, once Ugh. it's in there. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I wasn't hungry before. <laughs> no, really not. <laughs> God. <laughs> you can't top that. Like, that's really yeah. what it is. You yeah. can't top that. So anything after that, that, it's... Out. Like, well. after that, everything else is just like, okay, sure, now she has nails <laughs> in her face. Big whoop. <laughs> yeah, it's and interesting it, how that happens. You just it just becomes desensitized to it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> After that, nothing else could top it. It's like, uh, towards the very end, I actually really in, had a strange enjoyment with the finale because I think that's kind of what started having most fun with itself. With all the brain that's bloody. The, uh, like, blood what, happens towards, what happens towards the very end of the movie, spoiler alert, obviously, if you've gotten to this point, you know, if you watch my videos, you know I spoil everything. Yeah. Uh, what happens towards the very end of the movie, there's a passage in the book that the history guy reads that says if uh, the spirit consumes five souls, the... Mount, like the skies will uh, rain blood and the evil will rise and the evil and the, by the way the evil picture they have with the corpse rising was the same cover with original evil dead that was a nice touch uh, yeah that was <laughs> uh, I, th I caught that I was like oh, that's a that's pretty sneaky movie uh, <laughs> and of course it had like all the camera shots from the original evil dead you know they could zoom through the forest and all that stuff that was yeah. also a nice touch stuff like that I liked uh, but anyway, back to the point I was making here so of course like all five characters either die or get possessed in this movie and then of course the, the evil person who looks like Mia, which I guess was kind of supposed to be the point. I don't know if that was... I think so. I think, I, so. I think that was probably yeah. intentional. But um, then she rises up and then this, it starts raining blood and you have this finale with uh, Mia who surprisingly s survives her possession after being buried alive and then they pull some bullshit shit like resurrection thing <laughs> <laughs> and you know she's suddenly okay her face is okay, okay I there's no I feel, injury whatsoever. I feel like I should provide slightly more context because yeah. I feel like I just jumped a whole bridge there yeah so like first off the boy the guy does a really stupid thing where it's like he has a chance to kill her and he doesn't do it yeah, because he, like he's he's basically after history guys basically you think he's gonna die although surprisingly he doesn't he tries to say, okay, I'm going to burn this whole place down. Just kill her with it. Like, okay, that's actually a smart thing to do. But yeah. like, but then he goes like, no, I'm going to save you. And then he just starts and like, makes this uh, makeshift defibrillator. <laughs> Which doesn't look like it would No, I seriously doubt it. It yeah. looks like a combination between like something you see in a Saw movie and Pulp Fiction. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, by like taping two syringes together with a Sh bunch of wires sense. that was around a battery, and they teased the chainsaw. I thought that was such a hope, shameless tease. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they showed the chainsaw. I was like, oh, you bastards! <laughs> <laughs> you show me that, and you don't use it. That just mean. Well, they used it later, but again, we're getting to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Soon. 
so yeah, she, he goes down to the basement, kind of like a badass to give him some credit. And then of course they go through that. So in the book it says you can only kill a possessed person in three ways, or free her from her spirit, whatever. If you bury her alive, you either dismember her or you burn her. And that's pretty. So he says, okay, if I bury her alive, wait till she dies, and then bring her back using the defibrillator, even though, as Hollywood you think would eventually learn, defibrillators don't work that way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They had a lot of medical uh, things. Right? Yeah, it's they like, needed what? like a consultant. Like, quick, right. she's bleeding that's... out. Get the duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> that's a movie. Like that's what this, that's what this movie taught me. This movie taught me is get the duct tape whenever someone's going to die, <laughs> and call your mother. <laughs> that's the thing. I'll talk about that in a bit. Duct tape resurrection. Duct tape resurrection <laughs> and call your mother. That's what I've learned from this movie. Uh, so yeah, so she he buries her alive. You capture her, buries her alive, and then eventually. Uh, Unburies her. Uh, surprisingly, it works for some reason. It works. Yes. And she's alive now, but then he sacrifices him to kill the zombified history guy, and they both die in a horrible thing. And then the sky starts to rain blood, and of course, you get the corpse that grabs out of the ground and start. And they have the finale between those two. Yeah. And it ends in an admittedly awesome way. <laughs> to give the movie some credit, is it pays homage to Bruce Campbell, the class. Of course, you have you'd have to an Evil Dead remake. Yeah. <laughs> By basically having every one every one person is when we do something that he did in the original movies <laughs> which makes me kind of I kind of want to see him in like the corners like I did all this myself <laughs> you guys <laughs> struggling with but, yeah. <laughs> so yeah it's, um, you have that little shape it has some stupid things where she waits around for no apparent reason and then of course the, the, the wasting time the, the wasting time then the zombie comes up and catches up with her and then eventually what happens is uh she hides under her car to get away from the zombie. Which and then, didn't make sense, because no, you would no. want to stand up to start a... <laughs> yeah, and then she, but she grabs the chainsaw and was like, yes! <laughs> and uh, cuts off one of her legs, and then she gets, rolls out under the car, in which case the, the zombie proceeds to grab the car, basically just throw it on her, lands on her arm. <laughs> yeah. And in what has been the most astounding sense of willpower I've ever seen... Yes, and makeup. and makeup. And makeup. Yeah, the prosthetics are really good. <laughs> yeah. uh, rips her own arm off, grabs the chainsaw, mounts it on it, and then proceeds to, like, hack it right down the middle. <laughs> and just, like, the bloodiest scene in which I just started cracking up. Because at that point, it just got so ridiculous that there's like no way fountain. you couldn't... It was a fountain. It was a fountain. Yeah. It had to be a fountain. I kind of wanted to see, like, a, like a little like picture for a water world pop up in the corner. <laughs> Come this Halloween for the Evil Dead ride. <laughs> I really want to know how they built that set because you'd have to have so so many ducks <laughs> the blood. No kidding. I, I, and it's really good. Oh, I see that. It is. Like, I bet they probably just make it like two, uh, like foam molds or something like whatever the hell they use to make fake bodies, rubber molds, and just put like a fountain right down the middle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we, apparently we lost a lot of the rest of the internal memory in the camera. I did not realize this and I did not check it before we started recording, which I will not do again. <laughs> so oh, cool. we were talking about uh, Waterworld fountain placement inside the exactly. corpse. <laughs> uh, a feat of engineering, I a have feat to say. <laughs> <laughs> but I did like that little touch with the Bruce Campbell chainsaw and down the middle. I thought that was like a good way to end it, <laughs> at least as far as I grow. I thought this movie would end like when the zombie came up. I thought that for sure was going to end right there. Yeah, I thought it was going to um, end like with a hook of some sort. And not yeah, like I thought it was going to end in a cliffhanger. Yeah. And it's, it yeah. kind of does in the post credit scene, but we'll talk about that later, which yeah. that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so... And then there's the second thing in the movie is uh, Call Your Mother. The reason I say that is because the big, the big uh, emotional hook of this movie is, between the two main characters, is the brother and sister, and basically the brother basically left his sister behind to take care of his, her, his dying mother, pretty much, just abandons him, basically. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's presumptually why she eventually turned to drugs and why she eventually had to be there to begin with. So, the moral of the story is, uh, call your mother, uh, or visit her if she's going to die soon. Uh, don't be a douche and <laughs> just take off. Otherwise, you'd be possessed by evil spirits. Agreed. That's what I learned of this. So, uh, if you don't believe me, go and take your chance to see what happens. Uh, <laughs> maybe you'll end up in Evil Dead 3. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, that's, uh... Yeah, you got yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else to say about this? Besides, besides that moral, um, uh, moral, uh, cliffhanger type yeah. of thing with the story, um, I, I also, uh, thought that it had a lot of, uh, um, like, 
um, dialogue about I, I'm I'm trying to choose a word here but dialogue like, dialogue about like addiction because everyone that she knew she pushed away and she, they all died so I thought in like <laughs> oh. some in a weird kind of weird, parallel uh, yeah. actually kind of works use this uh, for your essays kids <laughs> <laughs> that being said if you're doing an essay about Evil Dead um, <laughs> your teacher might be raising some eyebrows already <laughs> yes. <laughs> All I'm saying, uh, but it's actually a fairly decent point. Probably, I, I'm not sure if that was intentional or if I just kind of. It's probably something that occurred to me. Oh yeah, and the, <laughs> in like, my brain. And the character, the, the character, the person gets uh, possessed. Like when she's possessed, basically goes full exorcist on everybody. Yeah. For a while, like, uh, yeah. like see your mother in hell and stuff like that. You're all going to die. You're tonight. all going to die tonight. <laughs> and so, so a lot of it was creepy. All the dark parts were silly, but uh, some was creepy. The yeah. context of nothing else were creepy. Oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. It doesn't look like this one had nearly the same insane story, uh, production story that the original Evil Dead had. I don't know if you know those stories. I watched the first one. I still have to watch the second one. Well, the second one is awesome. But, uh, <laughs> anyway, I don't, yeah, I know we're getting off topic, but you should be used to it by now. Uh, <laughs> but have, okay. the original Evil Dead production, what happened is, uh, apparently they only had, like, maybe a uh, like, uh, hundred thousand or make it or something like that. Or something, not, maybe not a hundred thousand, maybe it was more than that, but either way, something ridiculously low. Budget, yeah. Yeah, so basically, they did a, this is Sam Raimi's first movie, so he didn't know anything about proper production values, so there's a scene where the possessed girl is trying to slash at Bruce Campbell with a knife. Real knife. And can't, with the girl with the contacts, can't see. Oh, are, are you serious? I am serious. So basically, it was Bruce Campbell. It was her job to slash Bruce Campbell, and it's Bruce Campbell's job not to die. <laughs> oh, poor guy. That's terrible. <laughs> and when they smashed the uh, cameras through glass, that was real glass. Did they have to get new cameras, or they, did they just? I, no, like use? that, that the lens, like the glass windows. Glass, when they, like oh. when they crashed cameras through windows, that was real. That was a real glass window. That was in like. Probably, a, this is probably what they. Ha um, had um, at their beck and call to use or, uh, but or it's, no, like most of the studios use fake glass and yeah, just so no one hurts themselves. And just then like to, af to afford for their thousand dollar budget. Yeah, so they had nothing to work with pretty much. Yeah. And then like Bruce Campbell apparently at one point like twisted his ankle and they kept poking at it with a stick to keep what? that game going. That's terrible. <laughs> and I think what like I think one of the producers says if my actor doesn't bleed, I'm not. I don't think I'm getting the most out of him. <laughs> so so it's like there you go. And next even next time movie, just remember it can always be worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On that note, I think I've said pretty much most of everything I've had to say about the movie. Uh, so I think, sh unless you have something else to add, I think we should move on to trailers. Yeah. Okay. I think I'm good. <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> so we got a trailer. What was the first one we got? It we was Fast and Furious. Yes, we got a trailer six. for Fast and Furious 6. I still can't believe there are six of these things. It yes. still looks kind of fun in a ridiculous kind of way. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> Not sure what that contributed. I think it's like we had the Star Wars text come, it comes yeah, going down. Dun, 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 fast and Furious Six. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it has Dwayne Johnson. It has Vin Diesel. You kind of know what you're going to say. And cars, a lot of pretty cars, and pretty cars. a tank on a freeway, which looks awesome. Even and though it destroyed that, a bridge. A destroyed yes. bridge. Oh, that was one other thing I kind of liked going back to Evil Dead for a little bit is uh, they actually kind of had a logical, a fairly logical reason why they couldn't get off rather than oh, the bridge. the flood, yeah. The flood yeah. makes more sense just the bridge being gone like it was in the original Evil yeah. Dead. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that was like, okay, that's a nice touch. But anyway, back to Fast and Furious 6. It's like, it looks so stupid, but it could be fun. Yeah. <laughs> if it just, if you embrace the stupidity, just <laughs> <laughs> accept the stupidity and just go along with it. I watch it for the cars. There's that too. It's like, if you... If you have a movie that involves an action sequence where two cars are somehow keeping up with the plane <laughs> that they drag to the ground and when another car bursts in front of the nose. Which is physically impossible. Which probably. is physically impossible. And because the tr plane is on fire. Because the movie is concerned about realism, I have a feeling. <laughs> when you have a fast moving tank on a freeway, yeah. <laughs> But it's like if he just goes in that direction, it's that it's absurd as that shot. It could actually be fun, like the A team kind of was for me. But uh, yeah, yeah. Then we got for the Conjuring, which I've got for before. I think for Hansel and Gretel, I got that one. Actually, it's been a long since I've seen it. Yeah. It's like it's it's a movie. It's like, like a horror film. It's, yeah. it's it's your standard horror movie. It doesn't look like anything spectacular. So it's like yeah. that much really to go on. Except look, you can clap. <laughs> There's a part of me I want to just, if there's no one else up here, I've just got my car doors locked automatically. <laughs> uh, there's a part, like, if there's no one else up here, probably just going to throw happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> just stupid, but it would have yeah. been fun. Uh, 
Oh, kick ass too. Yes, we got yes. kick ass. Not the red band one, unfortunately. I the know. red band one is funnier. Uh, yeah. But you know what? I'm actually looking forward to this movie. Same here. Like mm -hmm. I like the first kick ass. It, it hasn't really aged all that well if you watch it now. But Are you uh, serious? I don't know. There's just a lot of the jokes that just don't really seem to be as solid as I've, they were when you I first. I haven't rewatched it. So yeah. So. Uh. And it has Jim Carrey is in this movie too with it, crazy makeup. I with crazy makeup, they, he, he looks really good in this. Like just prosthetically and all that yeah, stuff. They did a really yeah. good job of bulking him up and make it look convincing. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I was so surprised that that was Jim Carrey. And this possibly. is like this is the first time I've seen a Jim Carrey in a very long time where he's actually looked like not only is he having a lot of fun with this part, but he's also like uh, basically almost completely transforms himself a little bit. Maybe not so much as to agree, like say Daniel Day Lewis would do, or something like that. He but got the Tropic Thunder. Uh, yeah, he's got, yeah, he's kind of got the Tropic Thunder yeah. thing going on, where yeah. like he's clearly trying something different than what he's done before, and it looks like it would it will work pretty well based yeah. on what I've seen. Yeah. He's kind of basically like Nicolas Cage was in the first Kick-Ass movie, yeah, where kind of like had the Adam West thing going on. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be funny and like mean at the same time. Funny and mean. It's like I'm, so. I'm actually pretty looking forward to that, even though there's some very obvious parts like the top of the van scene where it was very clearly green screen in the background. Oh, when she was jumping in. Yeah, when she's jumping in the to... van. like and That looks... And they, yeah. you can tell they cut off a line too because remember the chair was like uh, game on cocksucker or something like that and they obviously cut that line out for yeah. obvious, fairly obvious reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's like, eh, even though that they have uh, the uh, red mist from the first movie has a pedo mustache going on, but... Oh, oh. <laughs> and okay. bondage gear, which I thought was weird. <laughs> <laughs> Or back to fetishes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we have some strange. I remember that. Now. We have some very strange conversations in this car. I think you've mostly been gathered by now, which is why this is fun. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it's like at, they cut out the name of the at, when he renames himself in the comic books and the movie, which I thought was I still think is really stupid. But uh, he calls himself the motherfucker in the comic books, and he calls himself that in the movie too. Oh, okay. I, so instead yeah, of the red mist, he calls himself the motherfucker, which yeah. is like. Are you, in the book, I think they kind of know it's stupid in the movie, so I'm going to go along with it. It's a homage to horrible bosses. <laughs> I, I can't beat that. <laughs> Is that a homage to horrible bosses? I've only seen, I haven't seen the whole movie all the way through. Uh, I think so. Uh, it, well, they had um, Mofo Jones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they remember that? <laughs> no, I, I, I only watched parts of the movie. I haven't seen all that. I saw the cat part. That one made me laugh. That part made me laugh. But, uh... Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so that one looks pretty entertaining. I'm looking forward to that one. Then we got one more, which most of us forgot about, and pretty much for good well, reason, which is uh, World War Z. It'll be interesting to see. I don't that. know. I'm the uh, twirling hordes of zombies. It just, it looks kind of, it, I take it, it looks really silly. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, I mean, Brad, say what you will of Brad Pitt. Uh, he's, I th I think for his age, he's a good looking man. Uh, <laughs> I'm comfortable with my sexuality to admit that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's like it's, it's, it doesn't even look like a good zombie movie, really. I mean, I kind of like the idea of seeing how the zombies take over the world, pretty much. But at the same time, dogpiling zombies looks really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> For what is very obviously this like hordes of CGI. And cheaper, though. <laughs> because you tell them they don't have to animate faces. That's why they do it. It's yeah, just, and because makeup. It's just lazy, and uh, <laughs> it's, it's like we don't have to have real zombies. We'll just CGI and hope nobody. <laughs> Like figures it out, even though it's very clearly CGI, and they just keep piling and piling higher and higher and higher on top of each other, and just ridiculous. <laughs> I, th I think from a uh, comparing it uh, from the book to the movie, that that'll be interesting because the book was like a blockbuster. Yeah, I heard the book and, is really good, and yeah. I kind of heard people who yeah. uh, fans of the book who seen the trailer said it kind of butchers it. Oh really? At least uh, maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. You can correct me in the comments, but uh, it's like from what I've heard, like I don't think. This movie kind of went through development hell. Like it kind of sat on the shelf for a while. There's a bunch of like I think. Oh, and I, I'm not. I don't know how big it was. I know it kind of there's some stuff going around for a while. Like it took a while to actually get made. But oh wow. So maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm thinking of a different movie. Correct me if I am. Uh, but yeah, that's what I was saying about. It looks like a pop. It looks like a popcorn flip. It looks probably like the battleship of this year, probably. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll well, probably not as stupid. But uh, are you gonna go see it? Probably. I, I'm gonna have to. Uh, <laughs> that's the problem when I dedicate myself to this is that is I'm gonna see everything. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so final thoughts overall. I think it was a horror film. Yeah, it was. It was bloody and gory and <laughs> all that. Uh, what about you? 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, it's, your, it's a very standard. I think it does pay a nice homage to the original Evil yeah. Dead. Yeah. And I do think it's a nice, there's, it, they'll throw a nice little stuff in there for longtime fans of the series. And, uh, I think it starts to lose its edge towards like the halfway point, which is when really just kind of like, okay, can we move this along a little bit, please? I think that's kind of what it got to Ever be towards the very end. Death after death. After, after death, death. It's, like, it's like, just die already so I can get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, but I like the finale. But overall, I'd say it's, if you're looking for a good horror movie, it's, it's better than most horror movies that come out these days. So. Yeah. I mean, it's mm. better than like, say, The New Nightmare on Elm Street or. I haven't seen that. And I saw most of it. No. Yeah, it was very good. But uh, it's probably the most hack and slash movies. If you really need gore porn, you can't really go wrong. Uh. I, I kind of, yeah. yeah. I, I, I just want to watch the special features to see how they did so, some of these things. This is like one of the most things I'm fascinated about when I watch uh, movies like this. Mm -hmm. It's just how do you rig that? You know? <laughs> how do you rig a fake body to spew all that blood out? One of the constant challenges yeah. of Hollywood. Oh, and yeah. one more thing before I forget this is we... Heard from another friend, uh, from Grant who saw this movie before us that there was an after credit scene that he missed. So yes. we saw it, and it's basically a shameless tease towards Evil Dead 4, yes. which I want to see so badly. It basically, the whole last part of the credit is uh, some guy talking about the the book itself and like they'll never like they'll never truly die. They'll always be brought back. And then it cuts to black, and you see a black and white uh, picture of Bruce Campbell, and he just goes. Movie. <laughs> and then it cuts to black. I was like, yes! <laughs> yeah. Army of Darkness 2, let's make it happen! <laughs> <laughs> well, like, this just comes right off the store, uh, eve of the news that Sam Raimi and Bruce Campbell have both expressed interest in making Evil Dead 4. Like a well, direct sequel from if, the Armory Darkness. So if if, he, if Bruce comes back, it'll be and he, you know he will. It's like yeah. Bruce Campbell. God, I love that man. He is the king of B movies. <laughs> <laughs> so yep, I think it's about all we got. Unless anything else to add. I hope Sam comes. I, I hope uh, Sam? Bruce comes. comes back. I watch Burn Notice, so I call him Sam. I okay, fair him. enough. Bruce Campbell. Okay, Campbell. so I think that's all we got. Thank you for watching. This is probably longer than usual, but uh, thank you for watching anyway. And see you all tomorrow. Jurassic Park. Yes. There cool. We go. <laughs> see you then.